So I don't know if you guys saw, but apparently somebody or some persons or some group, they don't know who, blew up a section of the Georgia Guidestones yesterday. Where we just learned there's been an explosion at Georgia Guidestones. Wow, I mean, it's it's just crazy. I mean, this is a strange time we live in. And it took us a little while looking at the footage of, of the things that were coming in to tell which side of the monument was exploded. But based on the way the monument faces and what sides face north and orienting it based on on the video there are reports saying that it was the the english side which has english and spanish on it it was not that side it was also not the side with russian and chinese in fact based on the orientation of the monument and based on the map it would appear that it's the side with hindi and swahili that was blown up I'm going to go ahead and assume the reason they chose that side is because it's farthest away from the road and the cameras, but there's cameras. There's at least four cameras in that complex. It's one of the most heavily filmed monuments that I've ever visited. When they say warning property under video surveillance, they are not joking around. Yeah, I mean, we were there, I don't know, five years ago or so, and we pulled up and filmed it, and it's it's something to see, like any kind of monument, but it's such a propagandistic message but but there were cameras everywhere you know it there was felt at least weird. four or five cameras watching it from all the major angles it feels extremely weird because to to get to this place you drive basically out to the middle of nowhere there's nothing else out there really except this field with this thing in it and then suddenly there's all these cameras and signs letting you know that you're being watched yeah i mean i i don't know what led to the site they chose but the town and the county is Basically, it was a bunch of stonemasons from Georgia. I think we, I'm pretty sure we even drove by their pyramid quarry. You know, we did. The classic like Flintstones type of stone quarry. And we tried to go to the museum even during hours and it was closed. It was a very small town. That's what I remember. How many parents do you think go, hey, kids, get in the car. We're driving to Georgia. We're going to see the Granite Museum. And I think it's really weird how now that it's been blown up because what happened was somebody blew up they blew up the swahili hindi side at 403 33 in the morning well actually the smoke starts at 403 32 but it starts blowing up at 403 33 in the morning and that whole side was blown up and then the next day i guess they sent out the georgia bureau of investigation which i guess is like an fbi for georgia i didn't even know they had that and a bunch of other teams and sheriffs and people and they decided to go ahead and just demolish the entire thing, which they say for safety reasons. I don't know. And all of these media are reporting on how... Which caused the world to cheer? Yeah, I mean, all the media are reporting on it, and it's as if they just don't know how to read that first part. So they just have no idea who would do such a thing and why, and they just don't understand it at all. And there's almost zero context to any of these reports that are coming out as to, I mean, they'll, they'll speculate all day on everything else, right? All day, especially as each growing year passes, what the media will say is, is more and more special all the time. But they're acting like this is all just so vague. And really, this is just a a monument for the world to help guide people. You know, I don't know if very many people listening know where Elberton, Georgia is, but I'm telling you to drive out to this monument, it's the middle of nowhere. I don't know if there's some kind of nuclear apocalypse or, or whatever apocalypse they're claiming is coming. People are all going to gather and concentrate on this hill in the middle of literal nowhere in Georgia and then read these in all of these languages and Babylonian cuneiform and whatever. I, I just don't see that happening. There's one famous author who claims that that is just supposed to be information for the new civilization that would come up after a total annihilation, say, such as from nuclear destruction because the thing was put up at the height of the Cold War. And so it's really just instructions for creating a new society. But I think that's BS because no one is going to come out to this nowhere hill in the middle of empty Georgia and go, well, here's our instructions for the new society. It doesn't even make sense. Although I will say, I did find it very interesting to learn that the United Nations helped translate many of these 
languages for the carving of this. It kind of it kind of helps solve Ooh, the mystery a just a little bit there. I know I'm I'm really shocked too. At any rate, yeah, I mean, I, I never really caught on to why they chose this particular place to put up the monument, and I'm certainly not in favor of destroying monuments generally. I mean. You know, whatever from the past is valuable, even if it was erected by a dictator. Th this particular monument, though, really is in the face of humanity because it appears to call for a reduction of population that is drastic and both disgusting and criminal. You know, I mean, it's it's not marking a Say battle that, that happened or a ruler that existed. It is in the face of everyone it's just straight population control number one on the list well and it's in a very daring and offensive way it poses to undo all the rights and ways of life of, of most of the countries of the world and puts the idea that their population generally is both undesirable and a plague upon the earth cancer be not know. a cancer on the earth is what it says yeah i mean you know, going through, uh, reading again today and going through the list of the 10 new uh, tenants, supposed, whatever, tenets, are they dictates, supposed to be commandments? I, I'm, I'm not you know, sure what it's to supposed mind to be. The classic 10 commandments. Going through the list again, there are certainly those that sound nice. I mean, I definitely agree with protecting the environment and not polluting the earth. I, I think a much better job should be done. But what kind of two faced talk is this? Uh, again, it is by the very people who own the most polluting and uh, toxifying corporations on the planet. Those are the kind of CEOs and, and thinkers for those Billionaires that go to the, the little are, meetings where they talk about population control. Yeah, those are the people in favor of this level of population control. And, you know, some of them, if you read them by themselves, might sound nice, like be friendly to nature and love truth and the infinite universe. Well, how could anyone who could connect with the infinite universe and love truth and beauty possibly hold the mentality that nine out of 10 people's lives are worthless and that we should depopulate to such an extreme level through what means? Uh, well, there is no way to depopulate to an extreme level without being a tyrannical douchebag and a murdering piece of crap. Uh, certainly it won't be with the consent of everyone unless you brainwash them. Uh, into, unless uh, unless the world becomes in. a cult. Well, that may have happened actually, but oh, that's sad. Certainly this does seem to strike a chord with the times. I mean, this looks every bit like an angry population that has had enough of globalist people telling the rest of the world what to do, making veiled, vagueish threats about cutting off everyone's resources and money and, you know, forcing them to stay home and, and cutting them off from meat and gasoline and other major resources. Uh, you know, this feels like it's coming top down from the kind of people who are con concocting the undoing of the world. It feels like that's what's happening. You know, certainly I don't condone... Uh, violence or terroristic acts or, you know, destruction of private property. But I, I totally, I understand the anger behind it. And obviously we're all pretty fed up with what's going on. So I could see where that was an assault on a message that looks provocatively like taunting in everyone's face. And this place has been graffitied and, and uh, disturbed before people spray painting things like death, the new world order and, I mean, how could you understand what is written there and the associated eugenics mentality behind it and not be outraged? How A lot of people certainly are. And I think it's really interesting because the guy who runs the Alberton, he's the executive VP of the Alberton Granite Association. You got to check out what he tells the local news about this, this monument. The man whose company maintains the site says vandalism has happened before, but never like this. We actually had to install cameras several years ago after the vandalism got so bad. But, um, you know, it does break my heart. Uh, you know, if, if you don't like the message that was written on them, you know, that's understandable. That's your prerogative. But, you know, there's no reason to take it away from other people that might. But that guy doesn't know why you would take that message away from those who might appreciate it. You know, the handful of people who understand <laughs> world order and the rationales behind depopulating 
90% or possibly more of the total population of the world. You know, let's leave it up for those people to, to just appreciate. And we understand why nine out of 10 people wouldn't want nine out of 10 people suddenly to disappear from the planet. You know, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's a pretty I, I shocking don't... message and it always has been. And it's shocking to see that this is happening you know, the thing's being demolished. Somebody brought it down, you know. I mean, let's keep a record of the video of this thing existing, at least, so history has a way to judge what drove people to the edge of anger and rebellion. <laughs> but, I mean, right? But but he's like, look, maybe you don't like to read about how we need to kill 93.7% of everyone else, but some other people are really into that. But, um... You know, it does break my heart. We just all need to never drive cars again <laughs> and never eat meat again. And never fart to breathe again. It would be really nice if nine out of ten of you never breathe again for the earth. I will just never forget when we were there and those women were there and they were reading the little dictates. And she was like, oh, yes, that does seem like a good idea. 500 million, that seems like a good idea. And I just... I. I never have understood that. Two ladies, middle-aged ladies, and they were walking around for a few minutes taking pictures like everyone does. And the one lady said to the other, did you read the inscription over here? It's not necessarily a bad thing. Well, I don't know. You could agree with a lot of the things written on there. Some of them are very blase. I myself definitely agree that we don't need petty officials and petty laws, but I don't know who could get behind only 500 million people on the planet. I've never understood those people who do that because they always think they're going to be one of the 500 million. And and them and their families and the people they care about, they'll be part of that number and everyone else will die, I guess. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't look at human life that way. So I I can't see that thing and feel good at all about about that. I, I know how to do simple math, and I just feel like that's that's not ever going to be okay ever to discount people's lives in such a manner. I think it's cruel. I think it's disgusting. But to wish death upon nine-tenths of the planet is incredibly bad karma, and I don't see how you could say that's anything but evil. That guy had time to think about what he was going to say, and that's what he decided to say to the public? I'm, I'm kind of surprised by it. I'm sorry. Going back to the 10 uh, mandates of the Georgia Guidestones, the number, obviously 500 billion, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature should be shocking enough. But, you know, this line by itself, guide reproduction wisely. Oh, it sounds wise. It sounds like there's a lot of wisdom and greatness, a, a goodness behind it, improving fitness and diversity. But who decides what fitness means with reproduction? Well, we have already seen this in the eugenics movement, and they targeted racial minorities and vulnerable poor people, both white, black, Indian, Hispanic. Uh, they targeted people they considered to be unfit. Certain others considered the judgments of fitness to be their duty of wisdom. And so some kind of authoritarian board, they get to decide the value of, of a person's fitness and diversity and whether or not their reproduction is allowed. You know, guide wisely. What does that mean? Who is Who's the wise guiding? person who <laughs> who has you know, the wisdom to who tell has other the people wisdom to say they exactly. have jurisdiction to tell everyone what to do you know unite humanity with a living new language that doesn't really sound too bad i mean frankly i've traveled around the world and i like commu i like meeting new people i want to be able to communicate with them i do and i would like to learn other people's languages but i've been to more countries than i can learn the languages of i'm, I'm just not that good at it either studied Spanish for a long time, but <laughs> how did we even get to the major languages? You know, it was a lot of colonialism. Spanish in particular uh, was spread throughout the Americas and became one of the most popular languages through a series of genocide, enslavement, and literally making people get on their knees and bow before gods they weren't even familiar with, you know? 
And I mean, you can put it however you want, but these dominant languages became dominant on the backs of empires. So having one language for the whole world, what kind of system does that really come to be? Exactly. Uh, uh, come to pass it. I mean, sure, I would love to communicate with any given person on the, in the planet if we have something to discuss. I mean, I make friends with anybody. I'm just saying the idea of a single living language that unites humanity. It's definitely a double-edged sword, and in the context of, of that number they put up there and these other statements, I don't know. Some of these things on this list have already happened, if you really think about it, because uniting humanity with a living new language, that's the internet. Ruling passion, faith, and tradition, and all things. Ruling all things, right? That's basically what with it says. With tempered reason. Passion, that's our emotions, our anger, our outrage, our love, our hate as human beings. That's controlling our mental processes and our faith and traditions. Again, who properly has jurisdiction and authority to dictate the traditions and faith of, of anyone else in the world, large groups or individuals? Okay, so ruling and all other things. Um you know, fair laws and just courts. That's that's good. Let's let's. I mean, most so. people can agree with that. Uh, world court is controversial. But Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. That's the United Nations. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Great. Now, that's my favorite I'm one. I'm pretty on the sure that's board. the one that everyone you know, agrees with. If you can agree with it, personal rights with social duties. It, that's difficult. I mean, I we just lived through several years of, of needless, social horrible. Duties. Uh, controlling a free speech, you know, it's very badly implemented. And again, who would ever have the proper jurisdiction and authority to balance personal rights with social duties? That's very problematic. Extremely. And then the contradiction of the whole thing, prize beauty, love, and truth, and seek harmony with the infinite. Sounds pretty good to me. I, I'm good I in mean, theory. I mean, it... But how could someone who wants that level of depopulation possibly fulfill that? I, I see no way. It sounds like a bunch of really nice love and light new agey kind of talk, but you can't really back it up with maintaining humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature because the word maintain obviously means kill or don't allow to be born or something. It means some levels of control on somebody deciding somewhere who else is going to get to procreate or reproduce or whatever. Who gets to live and who gets to die? That's basically what that is. That's what maintain is. That's what it means in this context. I'm sorry, but... And be not a cancer on the earth, he who smelt it dealt it. I mean, I'm okay, saying, I mean, right? Like who, you, who are the wise tiny group of influential Who gets to decide who's a cancer Americans on the earth? Who were interested in this kind of eugenics policy uh, they get to decide who's the everyone who's else. Who's a cancer? Everyone else is a cancer on the earth. Well, they the obviously people. decided. They put a number on it. Yeah, so that's yeah. who that's who a cancer is. Like the thing is, is a lot of these same people, if you go back and back and back, were made extremely wealthy by the very things that are complete antithesis to everything on this list. I mean, straight up. And they want to go back to a time before all of those decisions were made that would have put them in those positions to even have the money to make this monument in the first place. That's irony, I think. That's an extreme level of painful irony. Yeah. And you can't rule all things and also avoid petty laws and useless officials. You just, those two things are diametrically They, do, they don't opposed. work. So, because you so, would need petty laws and useless officials to enforce all of the other stuff on this list. So maybe the That's stone exactly blew right. up because it contradicted all It logic. was so ironic and the logic was so fail, it just exploded. I think it's really weird that there are so many cameras. There's at least four, if not five or six cameras at this site, but definitely at least four that we counted. I'm not sure about the road. And the Georgia Bureau of Information is giving everyone this one little edited video that shows two angles, and it cuts off one of the angles extremely quickly. I have no idea what that's about, but it's weird. And there's no video being released of them obviously setting a charge or whatever, whatever it is they would have had to do. It looks like a controlled demolition, though, if you watch in slow motion this stone coming down. It, that's, that's what it looks like. It reminds me of 9-11. I mean, seriously, this philosophy is being pushed by the biggest corporate 
douchebags Whores. ever. You know, the World <laughs> the Economic Forum, orders. the Bilderberg, the United Nations. These are the heads of uh, Alcoa and Microsoft are the biggest conglomerates on the planet. BP Petroleum and every, you know, all this right? stuff. And they're going to sit and sanctimoniously tell, uh, all, hand down the dictates of what's good for the earth. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, it's a joke. It's a joke. I don't, I don't, even if every single person listening to this video right now, and we all got together and did every poisonous thing we could think of in a thousand years, it still wouldn't equal that. It still wouldn't even remotely touch it. So who's a cancer on the earth? You know, this is just some divisive bull, this whole thing. And I just leave it up for the people who want to read that. You know, it does break my heart. Uh, you know, if, if you don't like the message that was written on them, you know, that's understandable. That's your prerogative. But, you know, there's no reason to take it away from other people that might. Let's leave up this genocidal message for the people who really like genocide. That's what that sounds like to me when I hear that guy say that. We actually did the figures, by the way, and um, when this was put up in 1980, there was a population of about 4.5 million people. This would have meant depopulating 88.8% .8 of everyone at the time it was put up. Now it would be more like 93.7% of everyone. So the message is 93.7% of everyone who's alive today shouldn't be here because it's you're a cancer on the earth, essentially. I mean, that's basically what it says. It's not really that vague. All these news reporters and all these different outlets, they keep talking about how vague. This is a vague, vague message for a potential apocalypse. It's pretty specific, actually. It has an exact number on it. That's, you don't get more specific than that. It's pretty specific. And the calling card to the classic eugenics movement that was sponsored by the Anglo-American establishment by thinkers and patrons, rich billionaires, i.e., you know, out of England and America who really promoted eugenics at the tail end of the 19th century and then really strongly at the beginning of the 20th century. They passed laws in, in many of the states of the United States you know, that allowed for forcible sterilization of undesirables, unfit people. And this talk of reproducing wisely, I would just have to speculate would be the idea that we're not only too many on this planet and we're overpopulated, but we're overpopulated by a factor of nine to one, eight to one, whatever way you do the math, you know, reducing the population back down to 500 million. Maybe people read that and and just don't compute what the number is. It's 500 million, half of a billion. And at the time it was put up, there was about four and a half billion people. Now there's almost 8 billion people. And they're talking about going back to a time when there was 500 million or fewer people, which is before the year 1600. They're talking about rolling back the population 400 years. They're talking about undoing 400 years of growth and development. Growth and development that, by the way, funded all of their entire empire. If you're talking about people like the Rockefellers who were extremely influential with this eugenics and funding large portions of it, where did they get that money from? Gee, if you undid the Industrial Revolution and all the things that happened in this country, it wouldn't have happened to begin with. So it's nice for them to go after the fact. They're doing that with everything right now, by the way. They're doing that with their foundation. They're, they're disavowing from fossil fuels. And it's like, you know, without fossil fuels, they wouldn't even have a foundation. The Rockefeller Foundation was literally founded on oil money. All of the things they're funding are based on all the things they're trying to act like we should go back now. Oh, this was so bad. They weren't thinking that at the time when they were drilling all over the earth and mining the crap out of everything and destroying and pillaging the entire thing for every resource it was worth so they could fund their entire thing. Well, this is the exact people who own those industrial corporations who have polluted across the earth, who decided for everyone else, who decided on behalf of the other seven or eight billion people, what kind of systems we would have and what impact that would have not only on the earth, but on whether or not people got cancer and were toxified in their food, water, and environment. And what was going to happen to the plants, animals, and trees that were destroyed by their processes 
ordinary people didn't make those decisions. Ordinary people might have worked for those companies, but that's because they needed a paycheck. The decisions were made by higher ups and the people who own and make decisions for those companies are hand in glove, the exact types of people from not only the eugenics movement, but from organizations like WEF or the United Nations or the Club of Rome, uh, various other organizations. And it's just, <laughs> it's supposedly a mystery who built it and who this RC Christian pseudonym person was, but it's also not that big of a mystery to imagine what tiny group of influential Americans cared so much about the earth that they wanted to depopulate by about give or take 90%. It's not that big of a mystery. Oh, yeah. They propagandize all throughout the 20th century. I've personally ju just done countless videos. Uh, I've got a collection of books on the topic. I mean, it's not a mystery except to the public who don't know anything about this topic and haven't researched it. it I don't know that it matters specifically who cut the check for the stones, like the people who agree with this message, it's pretty obvious. It's a pretty small world when it comes to that level of the top of the pyramid who think these things and promote these ideas. But it's just some rich people throwing out the propaganda. That's basically what it is. If, if I mean, anyone who has that much money can go get people to carve things into stone, put it on a hill and aim a camera at it. It doesn't mean it's true or real or right or good. So... It's really weird because the night before, I was just being kind of sarcastic, making a joke to Aaron about, uh, you know, how that's probably going to be one of the only things left standing after they're done with all this ridiculous nonsense that's going on right now. And, and then if it is far enough in the future, some people might stumble upon it and actually think like, oh, this really is the most important thing. And I, I was joking. I was joking around. And then the next day, my best friend sends me a text. Oh, by the way, it looks like somebody blew up the Georgia Guidestones. <laughs> That was weird that you were talking about that, but it's very clear. Like people are angry. They're furious about the things going on in the world right now. Uh, and, and in particular, how much of it is top down control. And it's extremely clear that if the things on this monument ever take place, it won't be by the will of the people. It won't be a democratic, you know, elected process that reflects the will of the people. It'll be a top-down authoritarian control measure that involves uh, depopulation and the killing of a lot of people. If they accomplish what's on that monument, that'll be how it was done. So it's a prehistory that's written that's like ironically telling the truth in a veiled sense so that it seems like they're not telling the truth. It, it's a weird predictive programming. If they ever get back to 500 million, it's going to be through a lot of authoritarian uh, murder, basically. I mean, there's no, you can put other nicer words on it, but it's, I'm surprised this happened. But I'm also you know, kind of not, though, with the things that are going on. I am reminded of, of that famous Kennedy quote that those who make peaceful revolution impossible make violent revolution inevitable. Right. And this was an attack. It was, uh, I guess, explosives were used. They assaulted this property. But whoever did this, they didn't kill anyone. They attacked the message, not the messenger. And they took out the message. That was, you know, that philosophy is what the war of ideology is pointed against, not against human beings, not individual people. Although certainly some people are involved in, in promoting it and propagating it. But people have clearly had enough of what's happening and I don't need to say more about it really. They're saying it's going to take millions and millions and millions of dollars if they try to remake it. I'm wondering what they're going to do now. Are they going to put something else up? Something else? Are they going to revise that message? Are they going to add more to it? I, I'm just curious now what they're going to do. They're going to leave it down. What do you think? I don't know. It, you know, maybe it's an eerie message from the people with the money. Maybe they tore it down to rebuild it. I don't know. I, don't I mean, it, it looks like people fed up with the system, but it might be some kind of provocateur fed thing or whatever. It's hard to say, but... It, they All they've done now is use this as an excuse, by the way, to attack so-called conspiracy theorists now. That's just, that's the go-to for course, pretty much anything at all times. And they're, they're still just not even addressing the fact that this monument says that we need to cut the population so severely. This is interesting here. The author, R.C. Christian, um, a lot of people have mentioned, and I believe rightly so, that that's a nod to the Rosicrucians or the Rosy Cross Christian. 
but also they put a pseudonym. They don't they don't put, pay all this money to erect this thing that's perfectly aligned celestially with all this physical data and spell something wrong. If you take all of these letters, it's an anagram for untarnished conspiracy. Hey, I think there might have been a code on that thing for sure. I think there is a code on it. I still think Their there is. Their mysterious time capsule and their whole auspices of not knowing who wanted it constructed. For whatever cryptic purposes, they haven't told us when they're even planning to unleash the time capsule. And maybe it isn't this spot at all. Maybe it's a spot at a certain coordinate. I don't know, that's just speculation, but there's blanks in the way this is written. And clearly someone's tried to dig it up. Yeah, and I heard a story about somebody trying to dig it up too, so. Yeah, somebody tried to dig this up with a tire jack from their car. We're just a small group of concerned wealthy Americans. We literally train people to drink out of single-use bottles and eat off of TV dinners and drive dinosaur vehicles. We train them. <laughs> I mean, that shame on them. It was very bad that they did those things. <laughs> okay, you're not putting that in. <laughs> and then they reproduce shame on them. I mean, the biggest tragedy of this thing being destroyed is that people sometime in the future aren't going to know what everybody was so mad about, but it's like we lived in a time period where some rich dude went around putting signs in everyone's yard, calling their mother, uh, you know, a prostitute or something. I mean, <laughs> they're going around pissing people off and, and dehumanizing them and devaluing their place on the earth. And they wonder why people are getting mad about it. I, you know? the, well, that's the biggest thing is the is the pretending like they don't understand why people are upset thing. If you're a conspiracy theorist, basically. If you know simple math. Let's find a way to produce the products and resources people need to live without poisoning the earth. At, totally. Yeah, but I agree. If your only solution to that formula is killing people, you need to rework it you, you need, need to, to go back again. to to math class i'm not celebrating people being forced to use bombs to blow things up because they're so frustrated with the way that the world is happening but i'm also surprised that thing was able to stand in that field for 42 years and the only thing that happened to it up until now is a little bit of graffiti <laughs> just because of what is on it it's an affront to most people. The way that they've done this is to really remove humans from nature and set them separately. And we're all part of the same ecosystem. This is all the same thing here. We, we are nature. I mean, we're part of it. To act like we're separate from it and we're not nature and we're some other thing entirely and we're a cancer since obviously... Humans are the ones reading. I don't think animals and other things are going up to this thing reading these languages. It's really a self-hating person over there. But all of these outspoken billionaires who have come out and talked on record about their views on population control, all of them have multiple children. Some of them, like Ted Turner, have what? He's got like five kids. So they're not talking about limiting their population. They're talking about limiting everyone else's. This is not a world that most people would want to live in to be dominated by an elite group of rich people telling you that you can't have kids they're going to have. I tend to think that when this person or persons gets brought in for the charges of this thing, if that ever does happen, there's probably going to be people all over this world offering to put up their bail, probably just for the decades and decades of anger. And I, again, I just think it's amazing how the media... Even now, even at this time, even at this late stage of whatever society is at this moment, whatever whatever we are now, I don't even know what's going on anymore in this society. Everything is insane, okay? But even now, the media is still going to try and pretend like they don't understand and have no clue why anyone would be offended by this monument or upset that it exists. <laughs> Just they, they'll, they'll go all out of their way all day to totally 
pretend to care when it's something that's happened. It's a historical monument that upsets people for obvious reasons. Things like the Civil War and things like that. This one comes up and they just act like they have no idea why anyone would be offended when this one actually offends almost everybody equally. What do they not like? It's written in stone and the, sh- the sun shines through the hole in the middle. Why don't they <laughs> like it? It's written in stone. It's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Which just goes to show you, by the way, that anybody with enough money can write anything in stone. It doesn't make it true or right or good or real. I continue to be shocked by everything that's happening all the time. I don't know what else to say. I just, when we saw this had happened, we almost couldn't believe it. And I'm wondering now, just my last thoughts are, are they going to dig up the time capsule? I'm pretty sure people have tried to dig up the time capsule. I kind of hope they don't dig up the time capsule. I'm a little concerned that it's not the means to... uh, (laughs) Like, if it has anything to do with number one one on the list, we probably want to leave the time capsule exactly where it is and not open it. I think it's just been sad. And I'm not sad that it's gone. So, I'm sorry if those people who really wanted to come read about how we need to to have 93.7% less people on earth aren't going to be able to drive out to the literal middle of nowhere in Georgia. I'm sorry that the people who like to fly private jets to a hill out in the middle of nowhere in Georgia are no longer going to be able to visit their genocidal monument. I'm not really sad. Don't worry. The guidestones will be available holographically in the metaverse generations. (laughs) So that they can go. It'll be the home screen for most of the users. (laughs) Oh, Oh, I'm so done with all of this. I just, I really am. We're gonna all sit around and pretend like it's so horrible that this has happened. How many people really are just sobbing their eyes out tonight that they're not gonna get to go? I, I saw a picture of a man literally peeing on this monument. It's when a Monty Python sketch becomes real and then becomes stretched out in an Inception-like way forever. And I just, I don't want to live in that place, so that won't be for me. But I'm not sad it's gone. I am not condoning blowing up monuments. I'm just, I'm just saying I, I'm not going to pretend like I just saw 15 people in the mainstream media do that I don't understand why that could possibly have occurred. <laughs> They're all acting surprised, and I just don't. I'm I'm sorry, but really, you have to you have to go to a special acting class to be able to pretend to be surprised about something like this. Well, that's it. So the great stone commandments of the 21st century have been destroyed. So future's unwritten now. I actually like it that way. 